Um, I'm Sarah Smuts-Kennedy and I'm an artist. I think of my practice as being a research-based practice where I am focused on engaging uh, with ideas around fields of energy and how they engage with both conceptual, contemporary art-based ideas but as well as also intuition-based um, practices. Very simply, I have come to talk um, in shorthand about my practice as having biodynamics at the centre of it. Subtle Field One is from a show that I did in 2014 called Field Work. And that body of work um, that I did from 2012 to 2014 was really exploring um, the tools of shape, so how shape itself is a tool and really looking to try and use that tool and materials, and in this instance, primarily brass, to sculpt the atmosphere. What is useful about subtle field is that it actually, the glass itself becomes a barrier at which light falls against, and the color itself then makes it visible as it passes through for a very short period of time. So it's a very practical problem-solving tool. The work, field work, that is in this show, it functions as a map for the show. It's made up of the materials of brass, two lines which intersect each other, that form a cross, but for, also form four angles. It also uses the material silica, and it's Mam uh, quartz silica is a very, very different material to glass. It's much tougher. It, this particular quartz is then um, has a map laser etched into it. It is known in this, these types of fields that the form of thinking itself could be a sculpture. It's called thought forms. Some people call it thought forms. So I'm really also navigating thoughts as sculpture. And the work, field work, in many ways, is where it gets held as a map. These thoughts about a time or space get held in a map. I like to think of my works as being both artworks and tools. Sometimes I think that they're more tools, and sometimes I think they're more artworks, and it doesn't really matter. Um, I am using a contemporary art language um, to talk. Sometimes these tools are really about me learning. I can only really make the thing that I need to learn next. Um, and I'm really interested in um, trying to understand the world that I live in. Going back and studying again, I realised that I needed, a, I needed a language that offered us the opportunity to, first of all, um, find a way to be present to the things that we are share space with, in ways that weren't just intellectual, but, but ways that were more bodily. I'm also really influenced by Goethean um, science, and he has this term which I find really useful, which is called the Nether boundary. And the neath the boundary is that exact boundary between gas and this other um, material, etheric quality of material. Um, and I think, I think a lot of my works are really about trying to work in this boundary space. The work with the magnet is kind of working in that space in a way that we more understand. One of the other influences that was very, very important while developing this language was really looking at Mondrian's work and Kandinsky's work. And I'm about to do, um, later in the year, the McCann House Residency. And I really feel like I have a real affinity with uh, some of the problem solving that McCann was trying to do with his works. So I sort of see that my works in a way have taken that two-dimensional language, pulled it into three dimensions, and really to explore the fourth dimension.